All right, first graders, today we're going to be using flashlight. So make sure that you have that and a mirror. I've got a mirror from Mrs. Ashby, her makeup mirror to use for when she's out and about. So I borrowed that. You can make sure you have a, a mirror that you can hold on to and move. Um, not probably a big mirror on the wall. That might not work as well. And then um, a little bit later, we're going to need a basketball. Okay, so we'll We'll, we'll do that for the follow-up video. You'll, you'll need a basketball. We're going to try to change the shape of the moon um, at the end. Okay, that'll be a little tricky. We'll give it a try. It's very difficult to do this on video. It's much easier when I'm with you in person, but we're going to try our best. Okay, first things first, we've got to set up our house a little bit. I actually have quite a bit of light in here, right? And so I'm going to be turning some of these off in just a minute. Let's review. Sun. Got to have flashlight because the sun gives us light. I, in fact, have a little lamp over here. And if I touch that, oh man, it's hot. So just like the sun, a flashlight or a lamp works as a great model. It gives us light, but also gives us heat, right? The sun is hot and it gives us our heat. Uh, in the summertime, we get more heat. In the wintertime, we're still getting heat, just not that much, not as much. So this lamp, same thing. If I touch that bulb in there, ah, whew, that can get pretty hot. Be careful. Be careful if you're ever doing that. Now, I have my moon modeled as a mirror. So this is actually our moon model. It's not in the same shape as a moon. It's not round like the moon, but it reflects like the moon. So if you shine a light into it, the light bounces back. And that's what we're going to kind of play around with in just a few minutes. Then the earth, we'll deal with that a little bit later. So to get our, our rooms set up, okay? You're gonna have to do this while I'm doing it. You need to clear out some space maybe, and I wanna get it darker in here. So I'm gonna turn off my lamps. I actually have one up here now. Turn off, there we go. So that it's a little bit darker in here. I've still got some light coming through. I'm gonna, I can darken that up as much as I can. But now let's set up our flashlight someplace, okay? I'm going to turn mine on and I'm going to set it right here, okay? And it can shine. I'm not shining it right at you. I'm kind of shining it across the room. And then I'm going to stand over here and I'm going to pretend I'm the moon. So grab your mirror, okay? Are we all set up? So you got your light on and it's shining at you and you've got your mirror. Now what I want you to do is use your mirror to reflect the light back. And what you'll notice right away is, oh, did you see it? Look, it's my ceiling. Oh, I'm almost touching it. Oh, I'm touching my reflection. Not really, though, because it's up on my ceiling. Look, I can make it move. There it's on my wall. There it's on my picture of me. <laughs> now it's back on the ceiling. I can put it, maybe I can put it on the curtains. What I want you to do is kind of is do the same thing I'm doing and just reflect your moon around. So I'll give you some time. To do that and this is what happens in real life we have the light we see at nighttime we see the moon's light the moon is not actually glowing it's just reflecting light like a mirror just like this see if you can move that around right and depending on where the Sun or where the earth is and where the moon is that time of month remember that whole orbiting thing depending on how that all lines up the moon is going to look different in the sky. So we'll talk about that a little bit more on Friday, but we're going to try to make moon shapes today too. All right, so I'm going to give you some time to kind of play around with that and reflect it. In fact, I can reflect it down on the floor. I can actually reflect it over this way, which is kind of interesting. So I can reflect it up look at, right into the camera. I can reflect it if I want to. So Sometimes it might be easier. In fact, right now for me, it's easiest to reflect it onto the floor. So try that. Reflect it on the floor. Reflect it on the wall. You can't see it, but I can. It's reflected on the wall over there. Reflect it on the ceiling. Move it around. And notice, I don't know about you, but when I move mine around, I get different shapes. Sometimes it's really round, sometimes it's more of a crescent moon. 
So we'll explore that a little bit more. But this is the first thing I wanted to do is just reflect. There, I'm back on the ceiling again. Reflect your mirror around. And if you want to keep doing this more, <laughs> I know it's fun. You can certainly keep doing this more. For now, I understand how that works. I'm going to have us watch a little movie so we can learn a little bit more about the moon. Beautiful and mysterious. Peaceful and serene. The moon is the brightest object in the night sky. Jupiter and Saturn have more than 60 moons each. Neptune has 13 moons. Even Mars has two moons. But the Earth, our planet, only has one moon, our nearest neighbor in space. Even though the moon is close to us when compared to other planets, it is still very, very far away. The moon is about 239,000 miles or 384,000 kilometers away. You would have to travel all the way around the Earth nine and a half times to go the same distance as the space between the Earth and the Moon. The Moon is much smaller than the Earth. If the Earth was hollow, about 50 moons could fit inside. Because it is so much smaller than the Earth, the Moon's gravity is much weaker. This means that if you were to visit the moon, you would weigh much less than you do on Earth. Only about one-sixth of your current weight. That means that if a giraffe was on the moon, it would only weigh as much as a tiger on the Earth. Although we can see it shining brightly at night, the moon does not have any light of its own. Instead, the light of the moon is really reflected light from the sun that bounces off of the rocky, dusty surface of the moon so that we can see it from Earth. Because of the way that the moon orbits the Earth, sometimes the sun lights up different parts of it. This makes the moon appear to change its shape from one night to the next. These different shapes of the moon are called its phases. It takes about 29 days for the moon to go through all of its phases and begin them again. Because it is so big and bright and close to us, the moon has always attracted the attention of curious people. But in the mid-20th century, people around the world began to be more interested in space. For the first time, humans launched rockets that were able to escape Earth's gravity and atmosphere and explore what lay beyond. After a lot of work and many tests, humans were able to visit the moon for the first time. On July 20th, 1969, the astronauts of America's Apollo 11 mission landed on the moon. On July 21st, Neil Armstrong became the first person to step upon the moon's surface. The moon has no atmosphere, which means there was no air for them to breathe. The moon also has extreme temperatures, boiling hot in the sun and freezing cold in the shadows. For this reason, the astronauts needed special suits and equipment to protect them on the moon to keep them the right temperature and allow them to breathe. No one has visited the moon for more than 40 years, but the footprints made by the astronauts who walked on its surface are still there. That is because there is no wind or water on the moon to wash the footprints away. Unless a meteorite hits the moon and smashes them, those footprints might last for hundreds or even thousands of years. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the moon today. Goodbye till next time. 
I've got my lights turned back on in here so you can see me a little bit better. The moon is fascinating, right? There's so much to learn about the earth and the sun and the moon. For now, what I want you to do is go into your seesaw, page two, and label that diagram. See if you can label it correctly. 